Hi, folks. Um, the original leader for today wasn't available. We've been trying to shift some stuff around. Um, I'm trying to deal with a sick kiddo on my side. And I think, Oliver, are you, are you there? I am here. Yes, Taylor. All right. Um, for those, let me give a quick intro. For those that don't know, um, this is was the cnf working group call under cncf um we're at this point using it as the call for the merging or the i'll, I'll just say for the new initiative that's happening under elephant is the cncf telecom work is transitioning and we're continuing the calls for both i guess related efforts in this new program that we're launching here until we choose a new time. This is going to be the last call of the year. And if you didn't catch as you joined, this call is being recorded. You can probably ask to disable that, Lincoln or anyone, if, if we want. It's They're going to be uploaded to the CNCS YouTube channel for the CNF Working Group. I think that's fine for now. Uh, but we can decide. And Lucina has posted meeting notes for this call. Normally, we let people uh, please add your name and then any agenda items, and then we get started. Uh, we do have a few topics related to the new initiative and uh, what we're trying to do. We'll add the links to the Elephant wiki page for some of the topics that we've been uh, going over as well. All right. Um, so quick, some quick announcements here. Um, Upcoming events, uh, for those who aren't, aren't aware, there's been an increasing number of Kubernetes community days, and those are popping up. If you're not aware, but you're interested, um, the topics could be many different things, so definitely could have networking telecom related to any of those. Um, some folks are asking for that sort of thing. and this uh, KCD um, Guadalajara is the, I think the next one, but if you look at the Kubernetes community days at any point, one could be pop up or, and if you're interested in having one, then uh, please reach out. I think the overlap between uh, what we're doing at LFN with this cloud native telecom program and the Kubernetes community days could could get some more, I guess, traction from the community. The uh, KubeCon Cloud Native Con, if you're interested in having a co-located event like we've had for the Cloud Native Telco Day, we've we had four of those, then please uh, talk with Rani and the Elephant uh, events team. Uh, to let them know that you're interested um, as well as if there's availability for sponsoring from your company. The One Summit uh, CFPs have closed. As far as I know, they haven't been extended a second time. Is that true, Randy Lincoln? Yeah, that's... Um... I think it was yesterday and yeah they couldn't extend it because they need to have the committee work on the proposals and publish the agenda so that was uh, the latest they could extend all right have the elephant developer and testing forum C cfps opened yet uh, to the best of my knowledge, not yet. I've seen some chatter about it in the eternal challenge, but I don't think uh, the page 
was set up for submission, um, but it should come up soon. Yeah, probably need to since those are, uh, it's more likely that people are going to want to go to both for the travel expense. All right. So let's see. Um, the one summit of you, though, is open. And I guess it's going to be open until April. Is that what it looks like for CFPs? Same thing for KubeCon uh, North America. All right. So does anyone have any agenda items before we go into some of these? You can verbalize them, add them to the chat, or just put them right into the document if there's something you want to go over. All right. I guess go ahead and check the, the PR, see if we have anything new there. Yeah, give me a second here. I'll do that. So... I'm not saying anything myself. Yeah, no, just give me a second. I will move it over in a sec. We don't have any PRs. We have a lot of issues, but I don't see anything new. Most of it's um, just kind of ongoing, smaller stuff. So I think we can go right into the other items. Okay. So uh, blog post, did you want to make a mention on that one? Uh, I'll just pull that up here in a second. Give me a sec. Yeah. So let's see. The CNF working group, uh, latest white paper. That's getting some traction. We have some blog posts and a lot of other mentions are coming up. I'm going to. I'm looking for it, Taylor. I'm sorry, just uh, looking uh, quickly. No worries. So the, I just put a link to the, the actual white paper. All right, thank you. And let's see. I just made a... So this is a a the blog post is that's on the CNCF blog um we were talking about Rani maybe doing something for um LFN but being end of year maybe we should look to publish something at the start of next year to get keep momentum going about um the discussions around what we're doing with the program and I think a lot of the related stuff from the CSPs are in this white paper. Yeah. Um Here's a link to the PDF. There's, it's in the repo as well. Is uh, up on this Git GitHub Pages page. All right.
Okay. Um, did you want to say anything else, uh, Taylor, about the blog or white paper? I, um, I guess I it's listed on this uh, challenges to be solved. So the white paper is, it's a, um, this CSPs that mainly were the ones that were working together as a group. These are the folks, a lot of the same folks that were working on the NGMN manifesto that was published in, I think, um, this summer sometime. And it's kind of a follow-up with more trying to make it next steps and more details. And it's also calling out that um, there's going to be a need to collaborate and change from changes from the CSP perspective on what's required in SLAs and stuff. So acknowledging that they're going to need to do stuff and, and they seem to be uh, wanting to embrace that and asking for vendors to collaborate to meet in the middle. Uh, so that's what a lot of that goes over. And I think it's a good to look at for um, a driver for the this new program that we're looking at putting together um, and continuing kind of what we've been doing in this working group. I dropped a link to the challenges and and then there's also an asset list that's going over the different uh, working groups and work streams, um, repositories with tools and a lot of other things. We need to decide on um, what will be directly usable and or I would say useful if there's things that are there, but we feel like it's either out of scope Maybe useful, but not out of scope for the program. That's fine. We're just putting stuff together and then we can make decisions. I didn't add the next few, so I can stop there. I mean, if, if we want to go over any of the current challenges or assets, Oliver, I'll let you... Uh, take over on that and lead on that and if who who put in the review feedback on elephant presentation is that something you're wanting to do oliver or someone else i think we had that we mentioned it last time uh on the last meeting um and maybe just to kind of bring everyone up to speed i think Rani helped us out uh a few weeks back um and so on the i believe it was on the 6th of december there was a tac meeting where the new initiative, this new initiative was was uh, brought up. Um, there was some discussion on it. Um, I think we're still at a stage where we're trying to move towards, um, you know, creating this under LFN. So, for example, we're having this meeting still, and we're making use of a, a pre-existing CNCF meeting um, that, of course, is related to the topic, but. We haven't established any anything yet within Elephant to actually, you know, start to create meetings and and uh, and starting to work forward on this initiative. So I think um, it was discussed, and one of the things, one of the outcomes of that discussion was is that we were to we agreed to come back, um, and we had said the tenth of January. Um, there was a TAC meeting there that we will. Um, the idea is to come in with basically a an overview of what this initiative is and what where we are in terms of status. Um, we did ask for an extension on that. Uh, so we that date is going to move to the the TAC meeting on the 24th. So I should probably just correct that here in this, um, in the notes here, I can just do that myself. Uh, so, you know, those of you who um, attend or would like to attend that's a that's a that's a good place to be to be able to voice um your input and and also just you know to hear how the discussion goes um one of the things that we'd like to do of course is this is, this is a community effort so ideally we're you know those of us who have been engaging uh have an opportunity to share our thoughts uh and put that as part of the presentation to the TAC um I'm not sure that we're quite ready today to present that and start going through. We could start to, you know, it's a draft form. There's a draft of it. Um, I'm happy to do that, but I think everyone will have to understand it is very much in draft form. 
Um, so, you know, bear with it, the, all the messages, sort of the key messages and, and things that we want to get across are not, you know, really refined yet at this moment. We've got uh, a bit of work to do still. Uh, and of course, we encourage people who want to who want to be involved in that to uh, to, to to have an opportunity to do, to do so. So uh, that can happen, of course, through this meeting. But also there are, you know, there are opportunities for those who want to contribute. Um, there's a document so we can you can add comments, you can review and. Uh, so I would encourage that. Um, I will share that link um, with, you know, in the meetings here, in the meeting minutes. Um, so other than that, if you have anything, I know you've been traveling. I don't know if you have anything you would want to add in terms of sort of the status of the initiative. Um, this has, of course, been presented at both Cloud Native Telco Day, KubeCon, um, and then it was also discussed on the last DNTF um, so I don't know if there's any anything any highlights that you'd want to share. Otherwise, you know, we can probably start to look at the draft document and just you know see see if we want to bring in some other thoughts into this. Yeah, I um, did miss the past couple of weeks due to me being on the APAC time zone, but uh, I I talked to Olaf a few days ago, the TAC chair. And um, you confirm what you just said, Lincoln, but uh, uh, um, Oliver, sorry. Um, I, I think that the understanding is that um, you don't have to think of it as a one and done meeting. It's probably going to be more of periodic updates between this work group and the TAC. Um, so, yeah, it's important to have this uh, initial presentation, but I think what will follow is maybe uh, in each TAC following TAC meeting there will be an expectation of some uh, status update, progress update, which could be uh, very quick and simple, or if there's not too much development between the TAC meetings, or if there are milestones achieved, then uh, it might be more substantial, but uh, yeah, I think that there was a positive feedback and the TAC sees this work group and these meetings as the right place to discuss this program and they just want to have some kind of uh, uh, progress updates or some uh, periodic updates uh, just to make sure everything is on track so there are no surprises, say, around the uh, April and uh, one summit time frame. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And uh, as you say, it'll, you know, periodic updates. I think maybe one of the things that is, <laughs> at least not for me, uh, super clear uh, is at the moment whether or not you know the initiative as it has been so far described is you know if we've sort of been given the the uh, the okay to proceed with that. In other words, is there are there still questions before work? You know, working groups. Uh, let's let me back up and say establishing this as a project within LFN. Then are there remaining things? You know, I got I almost got the sense, at least myself, on the last tack that um, there's still work to be done before we can decide uh, how it looks. So we're sort of a, sort of in a task phase. Tech, uh, sorry, <laughs> in a task force phase, uh, rather than being able to start now moving forward and, and creating this as a project. But that's my interpretation. Do you do you uh, do you have anything on that, Randy? That you would, you know, is that is that the yeah. correct interpretation? Yeah, I I think it might be related to some decisions, formal decisions that uh, the board, the LFN board, had to make, and and that's done. So I think. Between now and, and one summit, I think we're good to go. Okay. So, and and in your mind, does that, does that allow us then to start working with, you know, Kenny, for example, to establish, you know, meetings that are under LFN and, and, uh, and of course, start to consider, you know, things like we talked about in the past. We have assets, of course, from the CNCF that we'd like to start to transition and bring those over. Are those all things that you see us doing now? I, I just, again, it's kind of in my mind, just a, a dis, an understanding that we are in the mode of making this happen versus still trying to convince, you know, what the what the right setup for it is. I mean, there will obviously be continued discussions in terms of 
you know, refinements, but I think we've, you know, what we've presented so far has been a cloud native, native networking initiative under LFN, where we will start to leverage, you know, assets from both sides. We obviously will continue to work with that uh, and identifying the right assets, but it feels to me, and then, then what you're saying, Ren, is we can actually start that work now and transitioning over. And I just want to yeah, make sure. I, I, I don't see anything stopping. I mean, it would be great to first present that to the TAC before doing actual transitioning, but uh, okay. other than that, I think there is okay. no bar there are no barriers anymore. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so then with that in mind, um, and I will share with you all a, as I mentioned, a draft version, um, work in progress, very much work in progress. So um, perhaps the, the what I, if I, by sharing this a little early, what I would hope is that there's, an, there's a, it's a call for, for input and opportunity to contribute to this. Um, rather than you know, don't take this as it's the the, the final version. There is uh, still still plenty of opportunity to to uh, participate on this. So, um, just starting off, um, we had a meeting. Um, I believe it was last week. Uh, we met with Sana from Telus, who has been uh, very interested in this new initiative, and she is. Um, she has mentioned to us that she would like to be part of the TAC discussion, TAC presentation that we do. Um, again, this was originally, we were thinking on the 10th, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch that to the 24th, um, where, and I have reached out to uh, a number of people, I will confirm that with Olaf, but I, I have asked to uh, just to have us set that for the 24th rather than 10th. It gives us a little bit of time to work uh, once we get back in the new year. Um, and really what Sana really wanted to do is spend a little time in terms of preparing context uh, for this initi initiative and why cloud native networking is so important, not only to tell us, but to other others in the industry. Uh, so she wanted to do that, you know, a couple of slides just to set it up. And I think that helps prepare for the conversation about the proposal itself uh, for this new initiative. So I will obviously not go through her slides. She hasn't had a chance yet to do that, but, you know, the main point will be why is you know why this matters in a in a summarized fashion. Um, the The rest of us have basically been trying um, to start putting ideas down on on what this new network uh, networking initiative is, and I think we've we've probably heard this now on a number of occasions. We talk about best practices, we talk about uh, a testing catalog, and we talk about certification. Um, and I think hopefully most of that people have understood it, but I think uh, what we wanna make sure is the TAC has understood that. Um, you may or may not agree with this. We are working on sort of a, a very high level overview, um, trying to describe what some of the challenges are. Um, obviously we now have, as, as Taylor has already pointed out, we have some very recent um, and, and rather in-depth uh, documentation around uh, from both the, um, the NGM manifesto, cloud native manifesto, as well as the latest white paper um, that we were just talking about. So that is obviously um, going to be more detailed. Um, I don't think we have time to go through that and attack on that kind of level. So I think what we're trying to do is and continuing to sort of bring up the high level, a high level view. We have different telco platforms um, where we, you know Kubernetes is is the cornerstone of that, but there are decisions that are made in each of these vendor uh, platforms that you know, ca cause us to have some challenges when it comes to doing the interoperability testing. I'm not saying anyone's doing anything wrong. Uh, the point is, is that those are decisions that are made. And, and when we look at CNF vendors uh, and, and wanting to show that those interoperate on those platforms, um, there's usually a, a fair amount of work that needs to be done. Um, and on the top here, um, there's, this is really, we'll talk a lot about cloud native networking uh, functions or CNFs. We also wanna make sure that, you know, we don't leave anyone behind because we're stuck on a, on a term. So we're really talking, as we've mentioned in the past about applications from edge to core. So really anything that is looking to um, leverage the benefits of cloud native uh, and be deployed on a cloud infrastructure. Um, this, is, this is kind of the, the scope and the right-hand side really is to try to reflect a little bit about what, what are some of the challenges we're hearing. So we're certainly hearing from, you know, from the operator community that many of the CNFs or cloud native networking applications are still lacking 
um, in the desired cloud native characteristics and behaviors. Um, and perhaps that's not surprising. We're, you know, we are on a journey, but I think there's an there's a desire to see more of those behaviors um, as they start to to uh, progress on these journeys. Um, we know that the validation of CNF, CNF with the specific platform that is you know, selected or being used by the CSP is a, is a fairly time consuming and, and costly effort. Uh, and we also know that CNF vendors, uh, much like the company I work for, we're doing pre-validations on a select number of cloud platforms. And you know, as a smaller vendor in this community, you know, I'll say that we typically are following very much um, our customers' demands. So when they say they want to run on a particular infrastructure, that's where we start to look about, you know, uh, our, our uh, validation efforts. And it is a very timely and cost cost uh, costly exercise. Um, there is today a number of different um, you know platforms available, uh, and there will likely be a number of those. Uh, and I, I'm using this right now. This is highlighted opinionated because what I don't want to do is I don't want to create you know the sense. Uh, someone's doing something wrong. What I'm trying to say is that there are different flavors, uh, or I should say not only I, but we're trying to say that there are differences um, and there probably always will be differences. In other words, there will not be one cloud platform. Um, and that's part of the challenge is that there are differences and how do we handle those differences? Uh, and again, I've already mentioned that we have, you know, Kubernetes is a cornerstone to many of these, but um, each each vendor uh, is making an even operator, you know, depending on what if they're if they're uh, using public private or uh, the type of cloud they're using, you know, this will, they're making choices that you know complete that fabric. You know, we if we're looking at this from a very high level, we know we have a number of different platforms, we have a number of different applications that want to run there, and we have some challenges in terms of not you know interoperability, but also in terms of um, displaying or exhibiting the type of behavior that, you know, that people are expecting from these. What we want to do, I'll, I'll just please, uh, if you want to interrupt or just, you know, have a comment, just uh, speak out or, or uh, send a message on chat. Otherwise, I'll just continue in the interest of time. Um, the next thing is just, this is a little bit of a recap, what we've said before, but we want to try to put this again back into some of this context. So, we're not saying we can solve all of the problems uh, and all of the challenges, but we believe we can make a difference. Uh, and there's three areas that we have highlighted in the past, and that's really been uh, focusing on cloud native and Kubernetes native best practices. And what we mean by that is for networking, uh, helping to work through those areas where we still have challenges to make sure there's clarity on the best way or the best practices for addressing that um, with Kubernetes, with cloud native in mind. Um, and our focus then is really about driving greater industry alignment on what we've in the past referred to as foundational. So we're really trying to say, well, what's the common denominator here? It's cloud native and it's Kubernetes native. We know that there are going to be those opinionated differences uh, the further along we go, um, but we're trying to address the foundational. The second part, of course, then is testing, an open source testing catalog that it can be consumed um, by others, uh, whether that's a different projects within LFN, different adjacent projects, like, for example, Project Silva, um, but even there's benefits for the you know, members of our community, such as CSPs and vendors alike. Um, I use a very specific example today, the company I work for, we actually have taken this open source testing catalog um, as it exists as, you know, exists under CNCF. And we have that as part of our CI CD pipeline. So we're actually, as we're developing our product and expanding on it, um, we continue to run these tests as a, as a validation. You know, we've already once been certified, but that's really not this point of this. It's as you expand your product and you add functionality and capabilities that you continue to do so and validate that you're doing so in a cloud native way. Um, and then the last, of course, is we believe that there is value in a CNF um, certification program or a cloud native uh, networking uh, certification program. That does not necessarily imply just one type of badge. Uh, we know there are a number of different projects within the L within LFN that are addressing different aspects of cloud native networking. So this is something that we should discuss. You know, th this will be part of the ongoing discussion discussion. Um, for example, we've mentioned in the past Nef Nefio, which is really addressing 
um, automation and, uh, and lifecycle management for, for infrastructure and cloud native network functions. They may, as a community, decide one day they would like to also provide certification, um, whether that be a CNF that is compatible with Nephio, or if there are infrastructure um, uh, infrastructures that want to also show that they're that they're that they are aligned to to Nephio. So the idea here is to create a, a an, an industry leading CNF certification program, uh, and the point of that is to really help drive confidence. So as the CSPs are looking to uh, cloud native networking in their strategies. And as they start to look uh, for applications that are going to provide the type of benefits that they can look to a, an open source uh, certification that will help build that confidence and allow the industry to drive further in the adoption of cloud native technologies. The next slide is really work in progress. So I'm gonna skip that one for right now. Um, but maybe a little bit closer to heart now. We've been talking for some time now about what assets do we have. So on the left-hand side, there seems to be, you know, some people who have been involved here understand it quite well. Uh, others may not really have had full visibility in what was taking place on the CNCF side. Um, so I'm highlighting three of the main assets that we're looking at in terms of um, bringing that into LFN. Um, that doesn't just mean lift and shift, but you know, as you know, as baselines for something that we can expand upon. So uh, really there's three main areas. The meeting that we're in today, uh, as Taylor has already mentioned, has been used in a different way in the, um, than we're using it now, uh, primarily to work uh, through um, pressing issues uh, and really look at best practices that can be developed. We've published a best practices to address some of those issues. Uh, we have the CNF test suite, which is, uh, a catalog of tests that can be used um, uh, by you know essentially anyone who's interested. You can consume these tests, uh, this test catalog, uh, run tests against your applications, uh, and really see how you're performing uh, or how a particular application is is uh, performing in terms of its cloud native uh, its cloud nativeness. And then you have the CNF certification. Um, you have the C. Uh, which we have, I think, you know, there's a probably slightly under 10 today, but there's a number of vendors who have gone through the certification process. This is a beta CNF, so, um, or CNF certification, meaning in my mind, really, this was an initial start. The intention, I think there's around 13 tests that are required to be passed. Uh, and this is current day, uh, around 13 essential tests that needed to be uh, passed in order to, to receive that award. The idea was that this would evolve. There are certainly more tests in the test suite that can be used. Uh, I think the intention initially when this was started is really to uh, allow vendors to start understanding where they are. And of course, uh, over time, we start to increase the, the, uh, the level of, of uh, testing in order to achieve that, that, that certification. Um, and of course, we need only then, but you know, going forward, we need CSP involvement there really to understand you know when we reach the meaningful level of tests that are going to start to drive those things that I mentioned on the slide before the confidence you know to be able to say I'm, this this CNF is actually going to provide the type of benefits that I that I'm looking for on the right hand side and and maybe two other points just quickly on the left hand side it's been community driven so I think um, I just want to highlight that I think all of these, all of these uh, working groups have been um, particip you know, participating from members of the CNCF community have been involved there. Um, as I mentioned from my own company, we've assisted in terms of you know, whether that's identifying bugs or testing and you know, providing feedback for new tests. Uh, this has certainly been a, a community-driven effort. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have within LF networking, I think the most relevant, uh, and I don't want to cut, you know, say that there are, may not be other assets, but I think the ones we have seen so far of most interest has really been around the Anikit R2 track, uh, the Kubernetes uh, uh, track there for, for the cloud native infrastructure. This is also, of course, community driven uh, specifications, infrastructure testing, and um, Hello, hello, can you hear me? 
Yes, we can. Hello, this is Luis Velarde. I wanted to say something, to bring something to the attention of this forum. Can I say something? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Please do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to comment that uh, there's an additional asset that maybe is related with this proposal, with this initiative, or can benefit of this initiative, or the other way, this initiative benefit from this other asset, which is the existing project with the Linux Foundation called Silva. The project Silva is intended to build a reference stack, a cloud native reference stack for Telco, trying to address some of the issues that you have commented. Uh, and within Silva, we have also, we have two working groups. One is, well, more than two, but there's two, let's say, working groups for this purpose. One is the, the working group, the development, which is building actually this reference uh, platform that is cloud native and follows the Anuket RC2, so is compliant with the Anuket RC2. And the other working group is what we call the validation, where we want to validate, demonstrate that CNFs can work on top of this Anuket RC2 compliant. So uh, in this way, we are, promote, of course, promoting cloud nativeness because we are defining this reference implementation uh, and demonstrating that CNFs can work on top of this reference. So somehow these CNFs are uh, cloud native. But we are also introducing uh, in a specific validation of how to demonstrate that these CNFs, even before we start validating them, they demonstrate that they are cloud native. So they follow all the principles defined in the CNF test suite also defined by, by Anuket. So I think this project, this asset can benefit of this because whatever is defined here as the way to demonstrate a CNF is, is cloud native will be a precondition for, for Silva, for validation in Silva. But this initiative can, probably can benefit of Silva because in order to demonstrate that a CNF is cloud native is not only following some of the principles, being able of deploying or capable of demonstrating that it can deploy on this reference platform should be an additional uh, requirement somehow for uh, CNFs to demonstrate that they are actually cloud native. So I just wanted to highlight that we have this project and we could benefit one from the other. Yes, thank you. You were aware of this project. Yes, we, we are. At least thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, and in fact, I think, you know, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that uh, within Silva uh, as an LF Europe uh, project uh, that we are, that there, you know, the use of the CNF testing suite is actually one of the uh, tools that, you, that you're using for those validations, correct? Yes, we are using CNF test. Sweet. This is what we are going to do. This is why I say we can benefit one from the other. Yes, I agree. I agree with you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, absolutely. And I will come back to that in terms of as we sort of start to look at what this proposal in, in terms of, you know, an LFN uh, project, how that would look and how we think that benefits uh, pro other projects like Nephew, like uh, Silva. Uh, so thank you for that. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, and then just, you know, from a from, from reflection, again, I've mentioned this earlier. So, you know, on the left-hand side, you know, this has really been, you know, when you're using the test suite, the only requirement is that you're using a certified version of Kubernetes. So that's sort of the, the Kubernetes native piece of it. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we're, we're interested in cloud native best practices. On the right-hand side, um, again, this is not meant to, to be anything negative. It's just simply saying that as you get closer and closer to an implementation, then you have, of course, you know, there is a, the, the increasingly specialized and opinionated uh, track, which is, you know, you're showing then that the CNF runs on that specific cloud uh, infrastructure. And so that is, of course, extremely important and valuable. Um, I will, um, this was still work in progress, so I'm going to skip this one from right now, but I want to show you the last, which is, I think, hopefully everyone has seen uh, something that looks uh, similar to this. And, then, and I think this will be the last slide for today. So what we have talked about when presenting this is a, a new uh, initiative that is within LFN, where we're bringing together assets uh, from CNCF, but also LFN, uh, and there may be others. We are still in that exploring stage to understand what, what, you know, what assets exist um, that we can reuse, uh, and of course, then how we position this in terms of you know, 
different working groups. Uh, and, and right now, the, the idea is that this starts as, you know, somewhat similar to how we were showing within CNCF. You have a, you can have a set of work, uh, best practices that are addressing the challenges. I mean, we can go straight to writing tests, but I think we first need to also understand what are, you know, are, what are the ways that this can be solved in terms of cloud native, Kubernetes native? How do we do that? What are some of the suggestions uh, in terms of best practices? Of course, we one of the most valuable tools and assets will be a testing catalog. And I'm not saying that this is the CNF test suite, but I'm saying that a testing catalog that we decide upon, which then can be um, expanded and consumed uh, by others. Uh, and of course, the the Luis just bringing up, you know, the things that you find as you're testing and working with Silver. We're hoping that that can be feedback into this uh, testing catalog. So that there may be additional tests that are valuable irregardless of whether you're on, on Silva uh, or Anakit or Silva uh, infrastructure, if you're running on something else, you know, we're looking for those foundational uh, tests that are going to be useful. And then we can also look uh, as we go forward, we can certainly consider project specific tests, but I think I'm going to leave that out for right now. I think the idea is um, we're trying to be uh, a benefit to downstream uh, projects. Um, and so that there's easy, you know, there's broad, use of these, uh, whether you're working with Anakit, whether you're working with Nephio uh, or any other project. Um, so the idea here is we have best practices, we have testing catalog that can be consumed, and then we have a, this would not be a Silva certification. This would be more around this cloud native, uh, this CNF, for example, is following best practices. Now, what we hope is that we can expand the number of tests that exist today by working with other LFN and adjacent projects. So the things that you see here, uh, for example, LFN projects that we can collaborate with to cre create a more robust testing catalog and to support them as they desire, not that we are going to, you know, very much in the same way that Anakit Assured has been working in the past. If a project wants to have support in doing certification, we can help with that. Um, Adjacent projects, Silva, Camara, and then what I, I, you know, probably could put these in a slightly different color, but just to highlight that there is value. Again, I just mentioned my, you know, my own company as a CNF vendor. One of the things that we do is we leverage the existing testing catalog, and we certainly believe that that can expand to cover more area, you know, have a, a greater footprint in terms of the number of tests that validate that our, uh, our particular network function is uh, done in a cloud native way. And it's following best practices. So I think you know that really applies to you know whether CSPs want to use the testing suite as part of a, uh, a sanity check, if you will, uh, to also test certain CNFs and uh, whether they're built in in in-house built or they're purchased from others. Um, this could be a tool that they, that could be used. So this really is sort of the high level um, again pr proposal uh, as a standalone initiative that would have broad availability and broad value for a number of LFN and adjacent projects. So I'll stop there. I'm very interested in the last 10 minutes. If there's feedback, of course, I don't want you to feel limited to these 10 minutes, but if you're interested in helping out, please um, do reach out to either myself or to Taylor or Lucina. Uh, you'll, I think you've seen all of our uh, names on the, on the meeting minutes. Please feel free to reach out to us. We will continue in this Monday meeting, but uh, to evolve this uh, presentation for the TAC, uh, and we would you know, like as much input and feedback as we can get. So I'll stop there and take any comments, notes uh, that you might have. Yeah, uh, looks good, Oliver. Um, one, again, some feedback from my chat with Olaf. I think what the TAC would also like to see is some sort of a, a roadmap slide or kind of what will be, what you think will be available and when. Uh, it doesn't have to be very detailed, but to give the tax some idea of uh, what what is the, what what's the plan, what's the expectation to have available, again, especially between now and kind of the April timeframe. Yeah, good point, Rani. Thank you for that. Um, we'll do that. We'll address that. I I don't want to, um, well, I'll raise it now as well. I think there are a few other things that I think need to be, you know, they may not be specific to this particular initiative, but I think they may draw 
drive some other decisions for, you know, uh, for LFN in terms of things like, for example, we know, and I mentioned here certification program, we know we have a certification program today under Anikit, but I think that has been somewhat, uh, it's been fairly limited to Anik to the Anikit project and the Anikit uh, efforts. Uh, with this, I think we're, we're talking a bit more of uh, having ability to go a little broader. So I think at least mentioning that we should probably have a separate uh, effort to sort of look at Anikit Assured and what, what we do with that uh, if we move forward with this initiative uh, as it has been described. So that's that's probably another area. But I think more importantly is what can we do and how can we quickly start to um, show value for the community? And I think that's something that that is really key to our success. Hi, Olivia. This is Juan Carlos Garcia from Telefonica. I may comment. Uh, and just to understand, um, because as Luis said, um, at Silva Project, we are reusing practices and tools from Anuket, Nifio, and other uh, projects. Uh, what you are uh, proposing now is, is to take all these um, best practices, uh, testing catalogs and certification from Anuket, Nifio, and, and, and take them to a, a standalone initiative, no? right? So that Anuket and Nifio will stop doing that uh, job. Well, the thinking is um, the thinking is that the the certification. So I I, I want to be very careful how to describe this. So I think the idea is not so much to dictate to any project. You know, so for example, within the remit of cloud native networking, I think really looking at Kubernetes and cloud native best practices and certification for that, I think that should be within the remit of this initiative. What I'm suggesting, though, is uh, to your point, if if Silva, for example, is making use of the test suite, if there would be a desire, and maybe, and uh, sorry, did I? I think I said Silva. Uh, if Silva was consuming the testing catalog, uh, and certainly we expand that with with input from from Silva, that I think that's going to be great. What what I think then is as far as certification goes, if, if Silva wants to have a certification program, that is entirely fine. Um, what, what I think I was pointing to more is that Nefio that is directly under LFN today, um, if they would like to have a certification program, we will work with them and assist them. Again, the idea is to avoid them having to, to create processes around certification when there are already uh, under the LFN, you know, there are processes under LFN that would help them. So as far as deciding which requirements and which tests, that's very much going to be the decision of Nefio. So we're not going to, you know, take over or, you know, try to di dictate that. It's very much in terms of supporting those types of efforts. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, no, I, uh, I'm thinking about the, the, the future in Silva because um, I, I guess that if we are now somehow using uh, NIFU and, and Anuket as references and this certification work and these practices are going to be done in this new initiative, probably it's better to, to set the relationship, the relationship directly with this new initiative instead of with Anuket and NIFU. Yeah, just yes, 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 guessing, eh? yes, guessing. No, yeah, I, I think let me let me give you another sort of idea. So so one of the things that we feel like would be that will be beneficial for this initiative is that we are a bit free, uh, you know, we, we remove some of the dependencies. So, for example, a and I'm thinking about end users now. So operators, as an example, you know, yeah. if an operator decides they want to use Anikit or Silva, that is great. Uh, but if they decide they want to use something else and they still are looking for cloud native, um, we want to be able to support that. So I think, yeah. you know, so in other words, you, it, to me, what you're suggesting is that, you know, Silva is doing a CNF. To me, that's really about like a Silva compliant CNF, right? It's a, or it is a Silva compliant uh, you know, implementation of Nefio. That those, I think we need to, we'll probably need to work together in terms of how you, uh, how we market that just to, to sort of people understand this is very specific to that platform. Whereas mm -hmm. someone may want to do the same thing, but simply using a different infrastructure. Okay. And I think we need to be open for that. That's at least my, you know, my opinion is I think, you know, we know that, and you know, that the operators will choose to select different infrastructure you know, that suits them best. And so we want to have, you know, uh, we want to be able to provide value to them as well. Mm -hmm. and, and just a last question for clarification, Olivia. Um, 
this certification work that is done, in, you know, this new initiative pretends to do, uh, is um, is just schemes, frameworks, tools. Uh, it is not the process itself. So I understand that the certification process will set, be set up in the projects if the project needs to do so. So I mean, uh, this initiative will not certify. We'll define schemes, frameworks, tools, but not and support other projects to to set up the certification process. Is is that right, or is my I am I'm, am I understanding wrong? Uh, I think that that's correct. Um, and the only reason I'm hesitating is I, th I think the idea again is to to give you know whatever has been we there is going to be a need for certifications directly related to this initiative. So I, I think just think. Certified CNF, right? So it's really yeah. uh, cloud native uh, and and Kubernetes native native CNF certification. Once we have that process, I think if there are parts that can be consumed and reused for other projects to help them, then I think we would, you know, we're happy to do that. But I don't think, you know, that will really be, you know, the, the decision of that or not. But what I mean, then you will have the process set up. You will have labs for this certification, and you will issue certificates for CNF vendors. Yes, well, in in fact, uh, today, you know, and how it's been done so far in the CNCF is this is really, uh, you know, I would say self, you know, self service in terms of, you know, your your requirement is that you're running it on a certified version of Kubernetes. Uh, there was no lab provided, so it's really up to you. I think this is where okay. we can start. You know, we need to start thinking about those things. But uh, okay, so so yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't necessarily we wouldn't be looking to to have a lab for specifically Silva or these others. I think that's you know we're we're, we're certainly not there in the next and as any type of ambition. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay, I think we're just about out of time. Um, I will include the, you know, the link to this. If it's not already, I'm not seeing the meeting, meeting minutes at the moment, so for sharing, but um, we will include the link to this presentation. Um, it will continue to evolve. So feel free to please, you know, look at it, uh, add comments if you like, and and again, don't hesitate to reach out if you want to, you know, add some more uh, comments and, and feedback to us. Uh, we'll be happy to, to have that. So with that, thank you, everyone, for joining. And thank you for uh, taking the time to, to let us walk you through our thoughts. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.